Uh. Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is SharePoint Power Hour. This is our weekly show that we do every Wednesday at 11 Central. I'm Laura Rogers, and this is my team of SharePoint consultants at Rackspace Hosting. Um, Power Hour is a free show that we do. We just stream live here on our YouTube channel, SharePoint Rx, and um, we just cover all kinds of different SharePoint topics. This is going to be our 93rd episode today. Yay, getting close to 100 will be exciting. And uh, so what we usually do is the way it works is, you know, since it's live, a lot of the times uh, usually my demos are very unscripted, very informal. Um, we do just demos of all kinds of different topics, not anything that involves programming and, or anything actually on, on a server, but there are, you know, hundreds of other topics in SharePoint that don't fall under those categories. So, um, the way it works is since we're, since we're streaming live, you can watch it live on YouTube or uh, we're using a Google Hangout for it. But what you can do is if you're watching it on YouTube, you can actually click the little yellow link to take you over to the Google Hangout, which is where the Q&A is. So if you want to be able to interact with us and say hi and ask questions and things as we're going, um, you can go over to the Google Hangout and you'll see a little pane on the right that's like, for apps and the default app is this little one called showcase that looks like a little price tag that's where we can share links and things but the other one you can flip between apps with a little uh, icon of some squares at the top right corner of your screen you can flip over to the Q&A app and that way you'll be able to see the Q&A panel down the right side of your screen and interact and say hi and um, ask me questions as I go um, we uh, a lot of us we take we take turns doing these demos. Um, today's demo is I'm going to talk about some more ways to customize list forms without using InfoPath in SharePoint 2013 and Office 365. And um, Stephen is the only one here today. Everyone else is busy, I think. <laughs> we're having oh, glad you have the We're doing this once again. Okay, so I'll Stephen. I'll let you introduce yourself real quick. Hi everyone. I'm Stephen Wilson. I am sort of the admin person on the business solutions team. After I help you install SharePoint or migrate your SharePoint environment, I sort of get you started with the basics of, you know, what's a list, what's a library, how do I create one, all that kind of stuff, and get you, you know, into the beginnings of SharePoint before you get into the deep, dark secrets of it with Laura. <laughs> All right. So in my background, I've been using SharePoint for, oh my gosh, like 12 years or something so far. I'm a Microsoft MVP and I'm um, not a programmer, so I like doing everything uh, out of the box as much as I can, not having to delve into code. So um, in our last episode, episode 92, I uh, did some demos of how to edit list forms using, you know, just some browser settings and things like that and a couple of things in SharePoint Designer. And uh, the concept is that when in SharePoint, every SharePoint list has three different forms. There's a display form, an edit form, and a new form and for associated purposes. Um, so what I did in the last demo was I showed you how you can have um, like uh, for the example I used was sales leads, a sales leads list where uh, leads come in and they go through different statuses and as different statuses go through, go through different statuses, it needs to have different fields filled out. And so I just showed how to use content types and, and give um, each different content type different fields and remove all the other ones. And then we just add all those content types to one list, which are all based off of one parent content type sales leads, but then, hey, Kevin, welcome. But then um, I showed you how you can go into uh, and, and make your form so that um, you have a couple of different options. So as soon as you've got multiple, as soon as you've got more than one content type in your list, when people are editing the form, they're actually going to have a drop-down box at the top of the form that says content type, so where they can switch between content types. So you can, you know, I showed you how you can let people change the status that way, like change it from resource requested to resource assigned, and then new fields appear to fill in. And then I also talked about the concept of having like maybe a project manager view or a special like approver view or some other special way that you want a certain group group of people to see the form um, that. 
uh, has different fields that are special for them. And then I showed how you can use custom actions in SharePoint Designer, which are also called Quick Steps, to be able to even um, to make those have pretty little buttons at the top of your form and even be able to hide those for people that they are not applicable to. So I thought I would go take this concept a little further and talk a little bit more about other common things that people want to do when they customize forms. And you know, InfoPath, of course, it's really easy to customize forms, but InfoPath is an antiquated product and it's going away eventually. So I like to show you guys other ways of doing this without having to have InfoPath involved. So I'll go ahead and share my desktop. Let's see. And again, um, as always, feel free to just type questions in the Q&A as we're going. All right, screen share. Okay, so let's see. There we go. I click present to everyone. I think that that makes it so that it hides all you guys' faces. <laughs> and also, um, I'm going to go ahead and... Oops, let me remove move my VM out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and change my resolution because I've gotten feedback that um, having uh, a lower resolution, uh, especially when you're watching it on YouTube later, helps out. So I'll go ahead and do that. All right, so now there's my, okay, so there's, there's my, this is my list, um, sales leads that we worked with last time. So um, some common things that, people like to do in their lists besides um, just have different fields show for different people. And uh, like I did, like I showed you the project manager view that has special fields for project managers and we created that as a custom form. Um, they also like, a uh, common thing that people like to do is to have some fields not, not necessarily hidden completely from a form as someone's filling it out, but just set to read only. So maybe um, someone submits, say, a travel request, and then when it's going to the approver, you don't want the approver to be editing all those fields, maybe, that the person filled out about their travel request. You just want the approver to be able to fill out fields that pertain to the approval itself. So um, I'm going to show you a way to do that. Now, what we did when we, we created this uh, project manager button, which takes, it, takes you to a custom form, so I'm going to sh this is what I'm going to show you how to do. I'll show you how to make some of these, see how I made these read only. So maybe you don't want the project managers editing these fields, you just want them editing certain other fields. So I'm going to show you how I did this. Now in the last episode, um, we, I showed you how we went through the process of creating this as a custom form and I'm going to lecture you again on this. Now when you're doing all these custom forms and um, getting to the nitty-gritty of changing the way the forms looks, look and changing who f sees what fields and all this. It's the best idea to have all your fields created ahead of time and all of your field settings and options and everything set up ahead of time just as you need them because before you start customizing forms because once you customized forms, it's, it, gets to be, it can get to be a real hairy mess um, trying to go back into those custom forms and editing fields and trying to figure things out and, and especially now that there's no design view in SharePoint Designer, trying to have to do that in code. So the thing that I'm about to show you for this little um, quick fix here for making something read-only is in code but it's, it's pretty simple. So what I did was, again, in the last episode I created this project manager Dot .aspx, which is a custom form. So here is my site uh, in SharePoint Designer. I go to my sales leads list, and this is the uh, this is the form that I created, project manager .aspx. So when I created it, I'll just real quick recap. I made it an edit form, and I picked my content type of project manager. So that content type already has just the certain fields that um, we want the project managers to see when they're filling the form out. So, so doing that ahead of time as a content type makes it so we have less that we have to edit when we're going into SharePoint Designer. So that's how we created this uh, project manager form. So what, what I'm going to do is I'll go into this um, project manager form and you can kind of see a pattern as you're scrolling through here. Uh, so what I'm going to do is go find 
So you can see like customer source, customer contact info. And you'll notice that all these fields have this control mode equals. And by default, they're all going to say control mode, mode equals edit, since this is an edit form. If it was a display form, they would all say display. But they all say edit. So what I did was I just went up to these two fields, the customer uh, name and the customer source, and changed those to, I just typed the word display here instead of edit. So I'll go um, in this next field is customer contact info. I'll just change that to say. That's just a quick way. I'll go ahead and save that. Once you have all your fields on your form, I'll refresh this now, of, see, making it read-only. See, look, there's kind of this awkward little space right here where there's no space, where there's no character turn between the data and then the description. So that might be another thing that I might have to go tweak um, over in the code, unfortunately. But um, all this, as you can tell, is a table, if you know a little bit about HTML. So um, I would have to just go like put a carriage return, which is like a P or a, or a break or something like that, to be able to do that. So here's the form field right here, and here's the field description. So those are the two that are sort of running together. And so that's where I would have to go type some code in here. Let's see. Let's see what that looks like. Uh, did I do that right? Let me see. Again, I'm not a programmer. <laughs> All right. All right, so that's a little better. Okay, so that's just um, real quick basics of something you might want to do just to make some fields read only for certain people. And again, I showed you how to make this so only certain people can see these buttons as well. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to talk about is something that I did for our um, our, in our particular sales leads list is that we have um, some Word documents that are templates that we have um, that we've used for years that just have um, just a whole bunch of information about the customer and it's a Word document because um, we can you know email it to the customer they can email it back and and that just seem, has seemed to be the easiest way to get that information from them um, we don't have our SharePoint is not something that's publicly available so it's not like we can just send the customers to our site to fill things out so anyway we've got some Word documents so think about uh, now. I get this request all the time. Think about any kind of form that needs to have associated files. We see this in all kinds of projects, don't we, guys? Absolutely. Yeah. I keep forgetting that nobody can see me now, so oh. <laughs> I was like nodding my head. <laughs> okay. Well, um, so some examples of things that people put as attachments on forms. So I've seen people use just the attachment control in. Uh, in just a SharePoint list, and I've kind of ranted before about my little pet peeves about the attachment control, because about you know being able to add attachments to a SharePoint list item, because once you do that, then they're sort of just buried inside of that item. They're not necessarily easy to find with search. They're not something that you can collaborate on later or update easily. They're just sort of embedded in there, just sort of um, almost like not really read-only, but you can't just edit them live like you can things that are in a document library. Um, and then, and the same goes, um, Michael says, can you delete and then re-add the form? Um, yeah, I would just, t that whole .aspx page, I would just delete that and re, um, delete and recreate it. Um, if you have some major changes you need to make, yeah, you can do that. Um, those forms also, by the way, speaking of that, those are also, they each have their own URL. So you can um, send people to it. Like, for example, if I want some, you know, I have a workflow maybe that has some certain email going out to the project manager when it's their turn to do something. Look at this. See, it's a special, it has its own URL. So it's projectmanager.aspx, and then the ID is the ID of the item in the list. So you could create a URL in your workflow formulated just like this with just inserting the, um, the ID of the current item. And that would be able to take them straight to this page. So that was just kind of a little side note. All right, so we were talking about things that need attachments. So this is something that um, I've gotten questions about, even regarding InfoPath as well, because InfoPath form library forms has have an attachment control. But unfortunately, unfortunately, when people add things in an InfoPath form, 
Um, it's embedded inside the this XML file when when you put an attachment there. So it's just a it's not upgradable. It's not really extensible. You can't find those things in search. They're hard to get to later. They can't. They're not in a library. They're not. It's just a really bad idea. And I always try to advise people against it. So this solution I'm about to show you is what I did to. I wanted to make it so that we can go look at a lead and be able to have the associated files in a document library and be able to have the ability of, for the person to be able to quickly go to the form and add associated files and not have to have um, all this extra work to do like go to a library and have to pick from a lookup list which item it's supposed to be associated with I just wanted to show it on the form as they're at, you know when they're there so I did this using um, my solution I use what is using a document set so the it, the idea is that when a lead gets created I have a work I'm going to create a workflow that will go create a document set for every new lead that gets created and then I'm going to show you how I made it so that when you're on one of these forms so that it actually shows um, all the related things right there on the form and when you're on an edit form it will give you the ability to upload them so all right so first thing I'm going to do is you have to enable the ability to use document sets. So that's uh, in site settings. You have to go to your site collection features. And you have to make sure that you have document sets and activated. Okay, That is a special content type. I don't know why it's not activated by default. It's kind of annoying. So go ahead and activate that. I'm going to go back to my site here. And then you'll be able to add document sets to any library in SharePoint. But there's also a cool way that you can do a content type that's a document set. And you get a lot more um, options available when you do a content type that's a document set as opposed to just sticking a document set in, a, in just, a, just the default document set in a library. Um, we, did, we actually did a whole power hour on document sets, I believe. I don't know if maybe one of y'all can find that and stick it in the... Um, Stick it in the little showcase app if you find that. I think Joelle did that one. So I'm going to go ahead and do probably what she already did in that power hour, but I'll show you um, how I did this in our solution. So I'm going to call it um, sales dot set. And sorry, my keyboard's so loud. Okay. And then I'll just say the parent actually needs to be a document set right here. So document set content types and document set. And then I'll just put this in my little grouping here that will just float it to the top. Click OK. So when you create a document set content type, you have this, all this extra stuff you can do with these document set settings. And you can also add um, site columns. So remember when I created, um, remember when I created the, you know, all the SharePoint leads stuff, I created all those as site columns. And that's a great idea when you're doing these custom solutions because that way you can use them across other lists and libraries and you can um, reuse them in that site or site collection. So I'm going to go add some of my existing site columns to this other library that have information about um, the sales leads. So I click add from existing site columns and I'll go to my little group here that I put a bunch of stuff like that in. I put, um, let me think. I don't want to put. I don't want to dump everything in here. I put current. I'll put current SharePoint and future SharePoint and maybe customer contact info. Um, and I actually use the item title in my list as the customer name. Uh, so another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a. I might need to create a lookup field from. The document set to uh, the SharePoint list, but we'll get to that in a minute. All right. So once I add those, I'll go ahead and click OK, and then I can go to my document set settings, and then this says what content types do I want to be in my document set. So if I have a bunch of special templates, like um, like we might have for sales leads, or like you, like you might have for cert for projects. You might have a project charter template, or you might have a presentation template, and things like that. I'm not going to go too detailed into content types because we've done that in several power hours. But you can put those um, content types you've created in in your document set, so those are available for people to be able to when they 
um, click to create a new file in that content type, in that document set. So I'm just going to leave document in here for now. And um, I'll go ahead and say, all right, default content. Now, do you want the document set to already have files in it? So if I, again, think about the example of like a, a project, if you're keeping your project information in SharePoint, you can say, when I create a new project, it creates a new document set, and it already has all my associated project um, just templates that I'm going to use for that project. So you could take um, and add more default content that for files that are already going to be in this document set, which is really just like a folder. Do I want to add the name of the document set to each file name? Sure. Whatever. All right. And then shared columns. Select which column values for the document set should be automatically synchronized to all documents contained in the set. That's awesome. I'm going to do that. <laughs> so um, I'll go ahead and say all three of those. And then when I'm on the welcome page for the document set, I'll just put customer contact info. That's fine, whatever. All right, and then I'm going to click OK. And I'm actually going to add, I'll go ahead and create the lookup column I was just talking about. So I'm going to create a lookup column so that I can have a lookup, a relationship between the document set and the sales leads list. So I'm going to go add a new site column. It's going to be a sales lead Look up and make it a look up. Oh, by the way, when I have to do a lot of stuff like the stuff that I was doing in those data view web parts a minute ago, I like to have nice, neat column names that don't have a lot of weird characters in them. Um, like when I do spaces, I just don't like the characters it creates. So I'm going to create it like that. Okay, it's a look up field. I'll put it in my little grouping. And where do I want to get information from? Sales leads. This is an interesting thing about creating a lookup field as a site column because that means it's almost like having a cross-site lookup because anything in any of these subs in this site or any subsites is going to be able to use this as a as a uh, as a column in any of your lists, even though it could very well be a list that exists on a different site. Just a little tidbit there. All right, so sales leads in the column customer name. So I do want the customer name. And I'm going to go ahead and say um, any additional fields that I want to have in here. I'm just going to throw in ID just for fun. Um, I'll just leave that alone. That's good. All right. Okay, so now I've got an additional content type. That exists, and I added it to my, you know, right when I created it, I added it to my document set. Let me go ahead and rename it and get rid of the underscores. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, this solution will be fairly quick because I was going to show you guys some uh, a little bit more data view web part stuff too. Just a little bit. Okay, so um, that one's fine. Yeah, all right. So now I go to my document set settings and I can go ahead and add my sales lead lookup so that every single every single document that's inside of this folder, which is the same thing as a document set, is going to automatically get all this these metadata values. Pretty cool, right? That way you don't have people having to set metadata on all kinds of stuff individually. Um, sure, yeah, click OK. OK, so that's all, all I'm going to do for now. I created the document set. Now I have to go create a library to put the document set in. Do add an app, document library, sales lead files. And sales lead files, I can go straight to my settings page. And I have to be able to go add that content type to this. So I'll change allow management content types to yes and click OK. And then now I have this ability to add content types. And I'll go add my um, sales lead document set. All right, so now when I'm in my sales lead files, 
I can create a sales lead document set. I can also go, let me go back to my settings, and if I want to, I can make this um, like the default. Move it up to the first thing in the list. So if someone just clicks to create something new, it just creates a, this is a new document set. So I'm going to create a document set manually and show you um, just kind of what it looks like so that I can show you how I'm going to do what I'm going to do with the workflow. Um, testing. Okay. And this is a test. All document sets have a description. Um, and I'm not going to do a lookup right now. Okay. Okay, so then now I can go add files to my document set. Now, if I had added in the document set properties, if I had added other content types, like special content types of my own, I would be able to choose from them here. And if I had set it to automatically by default have documents in it, they would be right here. Okay, but I'm not doing that in this situation just yet. So what I want to show you is when I am looking at a sales lead, I want to be able to have to be in the document set for that sales lead when I'm looking at the sales lead form. So I want to be on this screen. I don't want to be at the top level of my sales lead library because then when I drop files in it they would just go to the root they wouldn't go in the document set so that's kind of the the challenge here so what I did was I created just ahead of time um, in my lead sales lead content type that we created last time I created a new column called lead folder so what I'm gonna do is when my workflow runs and creates um, the lead um, the document set via workflow I'm going to have it um, keep that value of that ID of that folder in this field just so we can reference it later. Okay, so I'll go ahead and pull up SharePoint Designer and close this thing, go to Workflows. All right, do a new workflow on my sales leads list. New lead. And I'm pretty sure, let's see, I did this. I think I just did this as a you don't necessarily need, it doesn't need, need to be a 2013 workflow. I can just do this as a 2010 one, so I'm just going to do it that way. Um, runs when a new lead is created. Okay. And then I'm going to have to go to the settings here and make sure the start options um, say start workflow automatically when an item is created and I don't necessarily need it to be manually started. All right, so now I can go say, what do I want my workflow to do? First thing, create list item. Create an item in the uh, sales lead files. You notice that content type is the very first thing it shows you that you can edit. A lot of people miss this. I have to go change this to sales lead document set so that it will actually create a document set. Um, now what I do, what I'm doing for path and name, and I'll show you why in a minute, is I'm simply putting the ID of the current item. So literally the name of the folder is just going to be a number. But that's going to work out in the long run. I'll show you why. So I'm going to go just say to this value current item ID. Alright, and then I'm going to say um, Customer lookup, uh, sales lead lookup to this value, and that's also remember with lookup fields we use it as um, we set it as an ID, and that is how you set the value in a lookup field. And then I can let's see what else. I don't want to put like a whole bunch of stuff in here, but let me see. So remember when I create the any fields, any values that exist in this metadata at the document set level will trickle down to all of the different files that are in there. So I'm going to say, okay, customer contact info is going to have whatever my customer contact info is. Um, and then, let's see, um, title, sorry to do title. No, I'm going to say title is also going to be the ID. And let's see, I did some screenshots of the other thing that I had done. 
ahead of time so I wouldn't forget. Um, I'll go ahead and put my um, current SharePoint to say current SharePoint and my future SharePoint. So then this item is going to get, this document set is going to get created and it's going to have all these values from that lead that I just created. All right, so I'm going to click OK. OK, and then it gives me a variable. So that variable is going to be when I create, use the create list item action in a workflow, the variable it gives me is going to be the ID of this item it just created. So now what I can do is, um, I can go set, let's see, set field, lead folder to whatever this number is. And that's how I can keep track of it if I need to reference it later. Um, current item, set lead folder to workflow variable called create. And I could have renamed that and made it something that made more sense. But I'm just trying to hurry through this a little bit. Okay, now this is the this is the tricky part. So um, this is going to be where I have to have to create a hyperlink field and set it to because I want to take them to a special form that's going to not only be the edit form for whatever item that they're clicking on, but it's going to also have the um, the associated documents in it. So let me point something out here. Um, let's go ahead and go to. Um, it, it took a it took a little bit to kind of figure this out to figure out sort of how to get the URL of what you know what folder that I'm in here. But I've got. Let's see. I'll show you mine. Uh, Okay. I changed the URL a little bit so it's not like our exact URL of, of our site or anything. Okay. So this is uh this is what the link is gonna take me. When I'm clicking on just any given item, by default it's you know, if I go to edit a form, that remember I told you a minute ago where the ID is gonna equal whatever the ID is of that item and that's how the edit form knows to show you that specific item. Well I'm also going to pass this whole other sort of string in here that also has the ID in it so that it will take me to that specific folder in another web part I'm going to put on there. So that's a little weird I know. Okay so <laughs> let's go to my um, sales leads and I'm going to go edit the edit form. So this is, you know, just is the, just the regular default edit form. And last time I edited it to be able to show you how to add a content search web part to it that shows related items that are in a completely different site collection that just happen to have the same customer name. So I'm going to edit this again. And the way you go edit the edit form or edit any of the list forms, the little default ones, is to just uh, go up to form web parts and do default edit form. You'll follow me. I can't let's see. Do I have any questions? No. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to. I already added the content search web part. I'm going to add the web part <clears throat> of the sales leads files library. All right. And then I'll go. Um, I'll move that sales leads sales leads files. Okay. But watch this. So now when I go edit an item. I don't want it to show like the top level of this library. I want it to be in a folder like that. So that's where passing that parameter um, is going to come into is going to be helpful. All right, to be continued. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, so um, I'm going to go do the workflow part. Go back to the workflow, and I need to create a custom hyperlink because. When I take them to um, to this form, I can't just use the regular edit form because I had to pass that extra parameter that I was showing you. I have to pass this extra information 
to the form I'm going to to be able to send, to be able to show that other thing, the special folder that it's supposed to be in. Does that make sense? So, all right. Now I've got to formulate that hyperlink. So, let me see. Go back to my workflow. Okay, I've got to formulate the hyperlink, and then I've actually have to have a hyperlink field that exists. So I'm going to go, and I create all my fields in here as site columns, you know, just in case. Site columns, and I'll go to... My site columns always take a minute for some reason. So I'm going to create this as a hyperlink field, and this is going to be a field that's not going to be visible on any of the forms. It's not going to be something that they can edit. It's just going to be something that um, just the value gets set. All right. I'm losing my voice already, and I've only been talking like 45 minutes. Okay. Um, okay. Where's my site columns? Okay. Site columns on my services site. Okay. Create one. Are y'all following? Does this make sense? Do you guys have any questions about inherently about what the heck I'm doing? Because it took me a good bit to figure this out. It was, but then it was kind of exciting once it was figured out. Um, let's see, um, custom. I'll just call it custom form. Um, Adrian says, "Why am I using a 2010 workflow instead of 2013?" just because I don't need anything that's available in a 2013 workflow and they seem to be more trouble than they're worth a lot of times, so <laughs> just not using it. Um, hyperlink, it's going to be a hyperlink and it's going to be in my little custom group and formula formulate it as a hyperlink. Now there are other ways that you can put a hyperlink on a SharePoint list or make a field look like a hyperlink or a calculated field look like a hyperlink and all and those are all involved like JavaScript and putting script on your forms and doing things like that so that's the reason I'm just creating a uh, column is just to kinda get it done out of the box without having to do any kind of scripting alright so now I'm gonna add that content that site column to my content type custom form and it's a hyperlink and so I added this to the sales lead which is my little my parent content type remember that I created the other day but all these other three these other four um, actually three right here get that that is their parent so I'm actually gonna go remove custom form off of these other out of these other content types because I don't want that to be something that people are filling in when they're in any of these forms. So just removing it from the content type altogether removes it from and just all the out of the box forms that I have. All right, so resource request, there we go, and remove. Okay. Okay, so now it's removed from any of the other forms, but it is going to exist in my sales lead leads list. <laughs> Michael says kind of. Okay. Um, <laughs> let me go back over here. So I need to have a field that exists to be able to set a hyperlink field to be able to set the value of, of it. So now that I've created a new field, I have to refresh in SharePoint Designer so that it will recognize the new field that I created. Okay. And my... Set lead folder to variable create and set what was my other set set my custom form field to set custom form there it is to and then notice this when I have this um, big ugly when I click when I click the little ellipsis thing, I have this big ugly thing for since it's a hyperlink field. I don't want to do that. I just I'm just going to go create um, a just 
uh, use like a variable so I don't have to deal with that weirdness in there and just I can create a variable and then just set the value that way so I'll go set um, set workflow variable form link Anytime I have um, that I'm setting a field in uh, in a workflow and it gives me some sort of weird interface that doesn't allow me to do what I need to do, um, like this like this one, I usually just put it in a variable and that way I don't have to worry about all that. So I'm going to go um, move my variable thingy up. All right. So now what do I want my link to be? This is where I have to be able to formulate my hyperlink to be able to go straight to that page with that parameter being passed to it. So I'm just going to take this thing and just tweak it to, uh, to my, new, my new one. All right, so this is going to be my um, services site in my VM. So services. And then I need to have the link to the form. So let's go make sure I got the, have the right URL to my sales leads list. So what is the URL to my sales leads list? Notice when I'm hovering over sales leads, the little status at the bottom of the page, it looks like I, pers I put a, a space in it when I created it. So it's sales percent 20 leads. So I need to know that when I'm creating a hyperlink to it. So sales percent 20 lead, and then the edit form, that's just the normal edit form, that's just the default one. And I don't want to have the ID, I don't want that to be 60, I want that to be just the current items ID. And then for the this ampersand root folder and all this stuff, that's got to be um, the root folder to the sales leads uh, files. Okay, so let me let's see. Sales leads files, and I have to go find this one out by um, going into one of my folders. To see how it kind of cuts it off like that, so it's very custom what it's going to look like in that specific library. Okay, so I want to be in the folder. Every time I click on this thing, it takes me to a whole other page. I don't want it to do that. Let me see. Hold on. This is where it drove me nuts when I was figuring this out. So let me go grab this thing right here. What I want to find in here is the specific part of the parameter that shows what folder I'm inside. See this? So it's going to have the name of the library here and then see the testing part? The testing is the name of the folder. But in my situation, in my situation, my names of my folders are all going to be just the ID. Remember? Just the ID of whatever that current item is because that's the way I set it um, via workflow. So I'm going to go ahead and get, grab this part. This is the part that I need, the root folder part. Okay, so copy and go back over to here root folder equals percent to f science let's see percent to f services sales need files and the testing is the part that I don't need okay let me check let me double check here on my other one ampersand root folder and then so, so that one had it twice. I don't need it twice in here with this REC SRC thing. See that? Okay. So I just need to have where the name of the document set is. Okay, so in mine, I actually have um, this little create variable. Remember that? That's what I use when I created the document set. Um, but when I created the document set, I actually just gave it the name. The name of the file of the document set is just going to be the ID of the current item. 
And that's the only way I was able to pass this parameter because the URL itself has just the name of the folder in it. It doesn't have any kind of other parameters like an ID of the document set or anything like that. So that's why I just used what I could find in here to be able to put that as my URL. So now I set a variable and then once I set my variable form link, then I can set my custom form, my value to whatever's in my variable like that. And then I want to make it so that it's pretty so that when people click on it, when people see that link in the list, I want it to have a nice pretty words open form like that. So this is how we formulate a hyperlink with text and then make it so that it says some, like this is like the text, this is the description of the hyperlink and the other thing is the URL of the hyperlink. Okay, so then I set custom form. So now I have to test this. Now, um, just another thing to note is when I'm setting multiple fields just all in the same item in SharePoint, you can put these together in a little what's called a parallel block so that it doesn't set a field and save the item and then set another field and then save the item again. So it's just doing them at the same exact time. So it just makes it a little bit more efficient. Okay, so I'm setting the lead folder, that variable, then I'm setting custom form to that variable. All right publish, and then I have to go create a new lead to make sure it works. Clear as mud? <laughs> Michael said, kind of. Anne says, sounds like you're using a list with attachments URL. Haha, <laughs> I'm not. My, uh, my list does not use attachments. I disabled that. So, now I have to go see what it looks like when I create a new lead. You guys were wondering how I did that in our site, weren't you? <laughs> Um, customer name. Um. By the way, Laura, I uh, pasted in our internal chat the uh, Joel presentation on document sets, but I can't post it in the showcase. Oh, it doesn't let you. Okay, I'll uh, I'll do that. Weird. There it is. Now you guys should see it in the showcase app. All right. So let's see. New ex existing customer. Um, stuff. And magic's going to happen. Let's see. Let's see how much I broke this thing. <laughs> okay. So there's uh, creating a new item. So the first time a workflow runs on an item, it creates a new column here. So it says that my workflow is completed. It already ran. I didn't add any logging in my workflow, so when I go to the completed button, it's not going to show me anything. You can use the log to history list for that. Let's go see if it created. Okay, so it, look, see it created the document set now. And remember, like I, like I set it up, it's actually got the name of, the name of it is the, the number, the unique ID. And then for co customer contact info, it passed. See, it passed all this um, existing information to it. Now the trick is going to be when I go to my sales leads list and go edit an item, that's when I, I'm going to see if I put the web part on here correctly so that it shows. Now when I go to the regular edit, edit item form, it's not going to show anything special. I need to go to that custom form that it created, the custom hyperlink that it created. So let's go modify my view, and I'm going to put my um, custom form. I'm going to put that as the very first thing in my um, item here. And I'm going to make customer name so that it's not linked to the item, so it's just going to show the customer name. So that'll be number two. That way they're not going to click on that default form. So now I'll see everything in the list would have just this open form button. All right, so let's see if it worked. So when we scroll down here, we're at the bottom of a form, and we are actually in that folder that it created. So the end user doesn't necessarily see the name of the folder or that it's just called three, and they can add new files here. So when I click New Document, it will let me navigate to go, you know, browse for a document and upload it as usual. And you can also drag files in here just like you can with, uh, you know, Anything else? 
any other kind of library. Let me go grab some generic file here. And notice that uh, it already shows the destination folder here. So as long as the end users don't mess with that, they just browse for the file and click OK, it will put it in the correct document library. As you can see, it's also showing me all of my metadata. It's already populated. It already knows it's associated with Bob's Bikes. I can click Save. All right, and there's my file. Now, let's go double check and see. So we'll just go straight to the sales leads file folder uh, library and go look in that folder to make sure that that's where it got placed. Okay, when I go click on three, now uh, you can see that there's the the document that I just uploaded. All right, so let's just show. I'll show you one more time. I ran the workflow. The workflow ran when I first created this item, and this is the custom link that it created to open the form. And when I click on that, it's taking me to my regular edit form page, but it's also passing some extra information up here. This root folder stuff that's telling it to show the information in that specific folder in the library. So now I can drag files in here just like with any other library. I can upload them in here and they'll all be they always be associated with this form. Then the trick from there is just to make sure that that's the form that people are using when they're editing things. So what I did was um, notice that I removed any other edit links or and I move the little ellipsis when I changed my view earlier I can also get rid of this column I'll go double check and show you what the column looks like so all my views instead of having an edit button you're gonna to have to use this custom form column so that to make sure that people use that form okay so in my view see I put customer name go uncheck this column instead of the default customer name link to item with edit menu all right, so that's the that was the solution for you know having associated files with a form. You don't even necessarily have to give people a link to this library. They don't have to know it's there to be able to go straight to um, the files that way. If you did want to, you'd probably want to. Now this is the one that I created manually from testing. I can go ahead and delete that. Under all of your uh, lib all of your document sets are just going to have numbers as the names. So what I did in my real world situation was in my view of my library, I am not showing the name column. So instead of the name column, I'm going to use the customer, the one that has the sales lead lookup right here. All right, and I'm gonna put that instead of the name as number two. And that way when people are looking at this library, they, um, when they click on Bob's Bikes here, it would take them over to that other sales lead form. But when they click on the little folder here, that's what would take them over to um, actually get into the, just the list of files that are associated with Bob's Bikes. So in my, uh, in my training for our little sales leads, I did not necessarily show people trying to go around in, in the library and go to the files that way because it just makes it more confusing. I usually try to just lead them sort of one simple way to get to things. So I could just take my um, my sales lead files library and just, you know, not put that in the quick launch and not have it something that I'm uh, directly sending them to. So I'll just uh, go hit edit links and then just get rid of sales files and just not have that as something that uh, that I'm taking people to. If I really wanted to go out of my way, there are a couple of extra things we can do. Um, I could go in here and go to this custom form. And if I really don't want people trying to link directly to the library or being confused about, you know, being able to click to go to the library. See, I don't have the title bar or anything showing in this web part. Just by default, it didn't show it. So that helps. And then also someone actually asked me um, and a follow-up question from the from the last power hour if someone is a project manager and does does hiding this button using the method we use with a custom action actually restrict them from going to it if they had the URL and the answer to that is no it's not what we did is not um, restricting them from permission to the item 
But, and again, and with that web part that we added on the edit form, we would have to go add that on all the other forms if we wanted to have that list of associated files here as well. Um, we can also, someone asked, how could you go about hiding it so if you're not a project manager, you can't get to this form? So there is one way I can go hit edit page here just in the browser, and that's a web part setting. And we actually did a whole other power hour about web part settings as well. So I'll go hit edit web part and I can target this web part to an audience. And so I can use just my project manager's uh, SharePoint group if I want to, to target it to an audience. And I have to, if I had multiple web parts on this form, I'd have to do both of them. I'd have to do all of them. So I can go, the target audience is project managers save and now if I so I'll go ahead and go back I think I'm actually in the project manager group I guess we'll see in a second I can go project manager and if I am NOT in the project manager SharePoint group this entire form will not exist on this page it will just be a big empty page right here so that's that's one way that you could do one thing you could do to restrict it from people being able to go to that custom form all right, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up that little fun little solution, and um, maybe next time we'll be able to do delve into some other ways you can do restrict views and things like that. But um, I actually did a whole other power hour about, um, about some of that, and so I'll go ahead and put some links to that when, uh, in the YouTube. I'll be in the middle of doing a presentation, unfortunately, so where I'd like to be able to broadcast from SP TechCon and do one from there. I'm not going to be able to do that. So yeah. one of you guys, I'll have to figure something out. <laughs> yeah, we'll come up with something, I'm sure. We have we'll 17 people still right watching down. me fumble through this. <laughs> All right. I'll let you guys go. And uh, we, I will figure that out and be able to update you all in a future power hour as to how I figured it out and what I did. But um, I thought it was a pretty fun little solution to be able to have files that you can collaborate on in a library and showing in a web part that's associated but not have to have it um, not have to have it buried in like an attachment or, or anything like that. Alright? Over and out. See everybody next time.